This story is called The Tailor. Once long ago, when all clothes were made by hand, there was a tailor who was always busy. His stitches were small and even and strong, sewn with silken thread. His scissors were sharp and cut straight and true through material finely woven and of unusual patterns to suit every customer perfectly. The tailor sewed clothes that fit both the body and soul of each customer. He loved his work. He loved his customers and knew them well so that he never sewed two pieces of clothing exactly the same for each garment had special features that went with every person. Now the tailor charged reasonable fees and his clothes lasted a long time. Still, his customers returned year after year to buy that spring suit, those clothes for the growing child, that shimmering wedding dress. Now, the, the tailor had money enough, but never a lot, for he spent most of his money buying that special material that was suited for each customer. And he never seemed to have time to sew anything for himself because he was so busy serving his people. But then one day, as winter approached, the tailor realized that he was in need of a new overcoat. And he began to think and plan about that special garment. Every day or so, he would drop a spare coin into a jar. And after some time, he was surprised to see that the jar was full. And so that very day, he took the jar of coins and traveled to a certain market where there was a vendor who had material from all over the world, silks from India, linen from China, cotton from Mexico. The tailor turned over every heavy bolt of cloth, searching for that perfect material from which to make that special overcoat, and he found it. It was a bolt of soft, warm wool. It was a warm reddish brown with flecks of color of all kinds. Here was a bit of blue like the September sky. Here was a tuft of red like a sweet summer apple. Here, a bit of yellow, like bitter dandelion. There was green and orange and black, and a tuft of purple, like velvety violets. The bolt of cloth was expensive. It cost every one of the coins that filled that jar. But the tailor was glad to pay that high price. He hurried home with the bolt of cloth clutched in his arms and got to work right away. He laid the cloth out on his cutting table and then he found the pattern pieces that he would need to make that special overcoat. He smoothed out the wrinkled tissue paper and pinned it on. Then he cut it out. 
He cut out the pieces for that special overcoat. And when he had finished cutting, he pinned the pieces together, sewed them together, and tried on his new overcoat. He stood proudly in front of the workshop mirror. He admired the high collar that would keep the snow off his neck. He pushed his arms into the sleeves that hugged his arms tightly. He buttoned up the double row of buttons that marched up and down the front of the over overcoat. He thrust his hands into the deep pockets. And then he turned and looking back over his shoulder, he looked at the long pleat that he had made in the back of the coat so that he could stride through the wintry streets on his daily morning walk. The tailor was proud of the overcoat that he had made. He knew that it would last him through many, many long cold winters. He wore that overcoat and wore it and wore it and wore it until it was worn out. Well, at least he thought it was worn out. But when he looked more closely, he realized he had enough material to make a jacket. And so he spread the worn jacket out on the cutting table. He found the pattern pieces for the jacket. He smoothed out the tissue paper and pinned on the pattern pieces. Then he cut them out and sewed the jacket together. Now a jacket is shorter than an overcoat. It usually ends just below the tips of your fingers, just below your waist. The tailor tried on his new jacket. He buttoned the button that held the front of the coat together. He put his hands in the patch pockets that he had sewn in the front of the jacket. He thought about the spools of thread and the special small scissors that he used to clip buttonholes, those things that would fit into his jacket pockets as he worked on his customer's clothes. He was pleased with his new jacket he liked the way the bits of color would allow him to wear that jacket with everything else that he owned because the many colors would match the colors of his shirts, his vests, his pants. And so he wore that jacket and wore it and wore it and wore it until it was worn out. Well, at least he thought it was worn out. But when he looked more closely, he realized he had enough material left to make a vest. So he laid the, war the worn jacket on his cutting table. He pinned on the vest pattern pieces. He cut them out and sewed them together. Now a vest has no sleeves and it usually fits your body more tightly than a jacket. It's usually shorter than a jacket, ending about at your waist. Now, the tailor put on his new vest. He admired the way it hugged his ribs. He liked the way the three buttons closed the front of the vest so that it fitted snugly on his body. He slipped his grandfather's gold pocket watch neatly into the watch pocket that he had sewn on one side of the vest. He loved his new vest. 
He wore it and wore it and wore it until it was worn out. Well, at least he thought it was worn out. But when he looked more closely, he realized he had enough material left to make a cap. So he spread the worn vest out on the cutting table. He pinned on the cap pieces. He cut them out and sewed them together. When he had finished making the cap, he set it on his head at a jaunty angle. He admired the way the short bill in the front would keep his hair out of his eyes as he worked. He saw the wide top of the cap that would keep his head warm. He loved his new cap. He wore it and wore it and wore it. He wore it inside and out. He wore it until it was worn out. Well, at least he thought it was worn out. But when he looked more closely, he realized he had just enough material left to make a button. And so from the worn cap, he cut a button. And in the middle of the button, he, cut, he poked four holes. And he sewed that button on his favorite shirt. He wore that button and he wore it and wore it until it was worn out. Well, at least he thought it was worn out. But when he looked more closely, he realized he had just enough to make a story, which I have told to you. And that is the story of the tailor.